humanistic learning th theory, an overview, I will say at the outset, beware of the limitation of labels. It keeps you from understanding the true thing. You may have some ideas in your head related to what humanistic learning theory is. Get beyond the labels. Let's try to understand this powerful learning theory. Learning is enhanced when our lessons, curriculum, pedagogy, classroom, teaching, etc. are aligned with humans' natural desires and inclination. That, in a sense, is what humanistic learning theory is. Humans have these natural desires, these natural inclinations. Instead of subjugating them, trying to manipulate them, we say align with humans' natural desires and inclination. This results in real learning, deeper learning, and more learning, more long-lasting learning when the learning situations are in alignment with humans' natural desires, tendencies, and developmental tasks. We don't need to manipulate or try to uh, uh, motivate with, with prizes and rewards, etc. Humans have a natural desire to learn, to grow, to create, to express. That is a natural inclination. Real learning results from this natural desire to learn, grow, create, and express, to be themselves. Humans have this natural desire to be good, to do the right thing. We can align again education with these natural desires. Ascension is a natural state. Ascension physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially, upward migration. We scratch our hand and we naturally heal. This is upward migration. The natural condition to gravitate towards wholeness, health, and healing, both physically, socially, emotionally, spiritually. And I use the word spiritually in a secular, non-religious context. Sometimes things get in the way, however, of these natural inclinations, and this is when imbalance is created. However, sickness, our mind or body responds to this imbalance in a way that appears to be sickness or ill health. However, sickness is often a healthy response to a sick situation. Example, a child has a horrendous home life, something bad is happening at home, uh, comes to school, is withdrawn, depressed. That is not sickness, that's a healthy response to a sick situation. So humanistic education tries to understand these natural responses. The goal of education uh, is human development, personal growth, and self-actualization for human beings to develop to their full extent, not necessarily higher test scores. All right. If we focus on human development and personal growth and self-actualization, these will naturally lead to academic achievement and intellectual growth and higher test scores, by the way, if that's our idea of a good time, which it isn't. Self-actualization is a state where one is able to accept and express one's inner core self and begin to actualize those capacities and potentialities found there. There are four tasks specifically associated with self-actualization. First, discover and understand yourself. This reflects an interpersonal element described that occurs through various self-reflective experiences. Understanding oneself makes it less likely that the conscious will be ruled by unconscious forces. It is an integration of the conscious and unconscious parts of one's personality. Expressing one's inner core, again an intrapersonal element, once images and ideas from the inner subjective realm have been identified, the next step is to express them. This expression serves two functions. First, it creates a more dynamic, more richly defined interaction between the ego and the self, or the conscious and the unconscious mind, and it allows those images to interact with other human beings. They can see them. The third 
task in self-actualization is to define one's passion and act on it. What one is interested in, what one wants to indulge in. The famous mythologist Joseph Campbell calls this finding your bliss, what you love to do. So part of the role of a teacher then is to expose students to a wide variety of topics and activities and create the structure where they can find and indulge their passion. And the fourth area is to discover one's strengths or particular talents and use them to learn how to solve problems. Now Robert Sternberg says highly successful people are not those that have a great many strengths and few weaknesses. Rather, successful people are those who learn how to use their strengths to compensate for weaknesses in order to solve problems or create products. So, in education, we do just the opposite. We find out what students can't do, and we drill them and drill them and drill them on what they can't do, so they can't do it for even longer periods of time. Instead, we need to find out what students can do, teach them how to use their strengths to compensate for their weaknesses. There is no such thing as a standardized product. Students should not be the same. Teachers should not be the same. Students should be able to find their strengths and develop their interests just as teachers should. This is the end. Part 1. Humanistic Learning Theory. More to come.